Hello everybody, Ryan here, or Aminar Productions, and today we're taking a look at a really old LEGO Star Wars set. This is the original LEGO Star Wars Millennium Falcon from the year 2000. You can tell that because of the way it is. It's very clear that this is the oldest Millennium Falcon, especially when you take a look at it next to any of the newer models. This thing just looks terrible next to anything they have today. So just putting that in perspective, its set number is 7190, again released in the year 2000, so it was kind of in the second wave of LEGO Star Wars sets. They still hadn't really moved moved on in design philosophy from the blockiness, so you still see a lot of that left over. I believe it included 659 pieces, although if you look on Brickset, it says 663, but the box that I've seen says 659, so it's a little bit of conflicting information there. It's somewhere in that range, I'm sure, but kind of an odd one to be sure. When it was released in 2000, it cost $100, an expensive Millennium Falcon, but I can, I can see that, right? It's about $100, I can see it. Now, in 2019, money though I think this is appropriate to bring up being how old this is this will cost about $150 that's with inflation calculated into that that's pretty insane for something with only 659 some odd pieces now the thing with that is they use these giant panels on the top and the bottom so there's a lot of large pieces used to get this build to where it is and that's why it is so few pieces for so much money but just to kind of put that in perspective the way that works so very interesting let's go ahead and take a look at all six minifigs. For the year 2000, I think this is an excellent figure. This Han Solo has a very nice smirk on him. He's got the typical Lego brown hair piece. You didn't see anything uh, very divergent from that for a while from the Han Solo minifigures. The one cool thing about him, though, I like is the leg and waist printing. Didn't see that a ton on figures back in 2000 either, so that was a nice additional detail for Lego to give him. Of course, back in 2000, Lego was still giving all the Star Wars minifigures yellow flesh tones, and they hadn't yet transitioned into more realistic skin tones, which I do like a lot better than the yellow ones, but I love that the beginning of LEGO Star Wars had yellow skin tones. I think that makes it nice and easy to chop LEGO Star Wars up into eras and look back on these early sets as such classics because they have the yellow skin tones. So the yellow skin tones, like, nowadays, like, kind of add something to these older sets, and it's kind of a positive for them. So, love seeing that yellow Han Solo. Ignore Luke's face. I did buy this set used. Uh, looks like it's a little scratched up, but it looks good enough, I guess. The torso and leg print is excellent on this particular figure though. I love that they were able to get a leg print on a figure back in 2000 for Lego Star Wars. Again, just like the Han Solo, like you don't see that too much. Like it's nice when they're able to throw it in there. So nice seeing it on this OG Luke Skywalker. I believe this exact same Luke Skywalker came later also in the Mos Eisley Cantina set. So just kind of keep that in mind. This wasn't a super exclusive figure. He of course retained that yellow skin tone, had a uh, tan colored hair piece, just like Han's hair piece, same type of hair. Took me a little bit too long to realize that the Leia had the wrong hair, so in this entire video, the Leia will have the wrong hair, except for now, I think. The seller that sold me it just sent it with the wrong hair, but it looked good enough to me, so I didn't even notice. Anyway, this is a pretty dang good Leia figure. It has a pretty simple print on the front with her robes or whatever you want to call it. I like the shiny print that they give just above her waist there. Very nice. Got a little bit of shine to it, as you can see it rotating through the light. Her face print is simple. She, of course, has the yellow skin tone. She has her typical Leia buns and just regular reddish brown or brown hair. That being said, I did have to pull the hair off my anniversary figure to replace her hair for this review. So, yeah, I don't know if it was supposed to be a slightly different brown color. It probably was supposed to be, like, regular brown instead of reddish brown, but you get the point. The hair looks fine. But that's the figure. Pretty simple overall. Yeah. Millennium Falcon will be incomplete without this Chewbacca figure. An awesome figure. I love the OG Lego Chewbacca figures, and this one is no exception. He has his bandoliers that they print little silver lines onto on both sides of the body. He, of course, has his little black nose on there. I actually have a version of this Chewbacca which was printed the wrong way. So the bandoliers, instead of being printed like this, the silver prints go like that, and the nose is actually on the back of the head. Kind of an interesting misprint that I own. I think I just got that in a set at one point, and I didn't realize it until a couple years ago. So just a little interesting tidbit to throw in here. Underneath the... Uh, the, I guess the main part of the Chewbacca figure. The part that makes Chewbacca Chewbacca is a regular torso. I can't get it apart. So again, I bought this used, but it's just a regular torso. Here we have the creamy gold C-3PO. Um, this color is weird to say the least. They of course have a much darker gold color now. And at one point they used real gold in the 2007 uh, special edition, one of 10,000 C-3PO's. But this one is like this creamy gold, really close to tan color. Very interesting for a C-3PO. Not my favorite C-3PO color, to be honest uses the normal C-3PO headpiece, pretty standard print on the torso and the back. So that's C-3PO for you, I guess. 
Finally, we did get an R2-D2 figure, which back in 2000, I guess this was pretty good. This is nowhere near what the R2-D2 figures are now as far as the standard of quality goes. The head print doesn't even come down to the bottom of the brick. It's like half of the top of the brick. It's very odd, but it still looks good enough for the year 2000. I actually think this R2-D2 holds up really well. I think all the figures in this set, besides their yellow skin tones and the creamy C-3PO, hold up really well to today's standards for, for LEGO minifigures, especially because some of them had leg prints and stuff. So very nice figure for R2-D2. You can't really go wrong with this one. And now we'll take a look at the actual Falcon itself. We're going to start up at the cockpit here. It's a little bit tough to get off with one hand. It can be done. Just got to put a little bit more extra into it because this is a little bit loose so you don't get a ton of leverage. The interior is sad at best. That would be the best way to describe it. You do have some printed panels, which I guess for the year 2000 wouldn't have been too bad. You can see you have the trench run there. You have just a couple of regular control panels. And of course, you can fit minifigures in there. We'll throw Han Solo. And I'm hoping you can fit Chewbacca in there. I think it should be uh, tall enough. But you get one figure. And eh, Chewbacca might be too fat. I don't know if we can actually fit another figure up back there. We'll just put Han Solo in there for now. You can put the cockpit over that. You can see him very cleanly through there. Um, the cockpit is also very awkward in the way that it's shaped at the front. It doesn't round off very nicely at all. You guys can see it just kind of ends, and there's no, like, print on the front or anything. Also, that's really weird. The print on top doesn't connect up straight on. You can see that there's a little bit of an overlap or a slight uh, nudge higher on the right side of that. Very awkwardly uh, placed there, so cockpit not that great on this particular model i think for for the year 2000 they tried and i think they failed so we're gonna move on from the cockpit the front section actually looks pretty dang good other than these things which are just kind of uh eyesores here you actually have pretty nice front floodlights or whatever the shaping on this is all pretty good it's something pretty similar to what they've kept uh to today so that's nice this panel can lift up which is going to give you pretty easy access to a couple more panels under here which you can open up which will reveal a little crate which actually has a really sweet print on it for 2000 like again like stuff like this is really nice and it's a nice little box where you can kind of store whatever you want in there currently i don't have anything in there but you put a little weapon or something in there if you choose to do so i love that print on there with the rebel insignia you can place that back in like so or you could actually place it in through the top there's actually just enough space up there to just drop it in so kind of interesting how there's two ways to drop something in there you can open and close this panel pretty easily it's on one of those kind of strong but loose hinges so you can't get it to stay where you want but it's easy to move unfortunately it's not just the cockpit that's rough looking though the rest of the exterior is pretty rough as well they use these large ufo panels type i don't know weird very large panel pieces and they're printed on with very nice detail i will say that the detail on the printing of the panels is good like that's that's something this set definitely has going for it you lose me where you have a bunch of blue grills with red one by twos under it like why why not just use light gray so that it matches everything else like when you look at the ship from the side it looks nice like, it actually looks decent, except blue is half the color you see. So that's where I, I'm a little lost on this particular set. Little side panel here has some really nice printing as well. There's uh, the same, there's a carbon copy on the other side, but pretty nice that they were able to include this. This little thing can open up. You get little different hinges and hatches like that all over this back panel as well can open up, revealing a little bit of storage space where you can actually even open up another thing to get even deeper into the set where you can place a minifigure or something to hide them. Kind of interesting. The rest of the way around the set is pretty straightforward. The backside is going to have a little blue tube piece, which is going to represent the thrust coming out of the backside of the Millennium Falcon. Very nice light kind of blue color. So it's in a little bit of a weird spot. It, it's not perfectly round or anything, but it at least follows generally the shape of the ship. Some of it peeks out, some of it doesn't, which I don't love. I think that's where I, I don't like it the most, but overall not terrible but definitely not great the radar dish i'm sorry this is in the new gray the rest of it's in old gray i know i did buy this used you can see the blaster on top here with the four barrels for your uh it's basically the mean weapon of the money falcon i think you could actually probably put a figure or something in there i'll explain what that's for here in a second though why that's the what i've determined is the main reason that can open but the landing gear underneath is just attached like normal lego bricks it's not the best that's the best way to put it. Like, it'll just pop right off. Like, it's not very well held on there. So, 
not a fan of the landing gear on this set just because it doesn't have a very secure connection like it just it's easy to get to pop off and in general picking up the ship to fly it around is a little bit awkward because i always feel like i'm gonna bust through the bottom panels i think it's fine but it just feels that way you got to be careful picking up this set with two hands is going to be the way to go just one more look at that exterior with the top panel on kind of rough looking very rough looking actually here's the bottom side that's with one piece of landing gear missing because I took it off. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Let's go ahead and uh, show you how to open this puppy up. Opening the Millennium Falcon is pretty easy. You literally just pull up on a couple of panels and you're gonna have to get some some uh, leverage with the bottom part of the vehicle and you can just lift it up or ship, not vehicle. Here's the whole top panel. It's very much brick built. There's no real Technic exoskeleton to the set, which is why it's so weak in some areas or why it will be or feel weak and sometimes pieces will just kind of pop off. That is why. So we'll get to how that reattaches here in a moment if you haven't figured it out yet. But the interior, just pretty much everything is exposed here. You have a little escape pod, which I think is the most interesting part of the interior just because of how weird it is. So if you actually want to drop this out, you got to pull it out but you could drop it out if you want to by pushing down on it. It's just not very easy. Like everything just seems to break and getting it to fall out and then you have to lift it and then it can slide out, but then it will get caught unless you drop it down farther, but then you have to have the ship in the air. I don't know, not that great. As you can tell, you could fit a minifigure in here. I'll leave that up to your imagination. I don't think this is worthy of putting a minifigure in. It's one of the weirdest things. It might be the weirdest thing I've ever seen included in a Lego Star Wars set is kind of like a secondary thing within the set. This is, this is just, dude, let me know what you guys think about this, but like, I don't know, the escape pod's whack. That being said, it will fit nicely into its home and we're gonna leave it there and never touch it again. There's tools littered throughout the Millennium Falcon so that you can repair it and work on it kind of like they do in the Empire Strikes Back, I think. So they are all around. You can just pick up random tools as you wish. There are also some panels here which you can open revealing even more tools because who doesn't need more tools? That That's uh, Chewbacca's weapon in there. So who doesn't need more tools? There's that box we showed a little earlier. You have your game of, uh, I don't remember what game. It's like a chess-like game that they play in Star Wars. I'm sure you guys are going to tell me what it's called in the comments section below. And then we also have a few control panels with a chair for any character you deem appropriate to be sitting there. These are like couches here, so you can actually place minifigures on there as well. So for example, we'll just take Luke and you sit him in between the two black jumper tiles or plates. And there he is. So pretty easy to, uh, to use those. Over here near the cockpit, nothing much going on, just kind of empty space. Over here you have a backpack and a weapon for Han Solo. Nothing else really going on in the back here. Little spot here that, I mean, I guess it could be the... And just basically more open space throughout. I pretty much covered all the features besides these last two panels back here, which have a little spot where you could actually hide characters in if you wanted to hide them from a particular uh, stormtrooper invasion of the ship. Well, they're a little, a little I mean, that's kind of obvious, but I'm sure if I, uh, <laughs> I read, read it the way she's in there, it might fit, but it's some bit of storage that you can use however you see fit. Over here, there is also a little walkway or ramp, which you can have drop out from the Millennium Falcon. You can either uh, pull it down from underneath or you can push down on it from above pulling it down from underneath is a little tough but it is doable and once you get it down two clicks you can theoretically have your figures walk up and into the Millennium Falcon although it's very like yeah you can't really do it but it's it's a feature that they include on Millennium Falcons because it's obviously something that is accurate but it's just hard to like take a figure and like walk them up here with one hand you need a second hand to do it it's like eh. It's not, it's just not a, there you go. You see, it does work. It's just not a really practical feature. I think that's the best way to put it. It's nice that they include it, but it's just not practical. So that's really everything going on on the interior of this set. Can't really think of any other features. I will mention this white Technic pin that you see sticking up does have a use and we're gonna show that off now. So if you guys remember earlier, I opened up the turret on top of the Millennium Falcon to show you what it looks like from the top down. And there was a little hole in there, or a few little holes. Basically, you open this up so that you can see how it lines up with that white pin because that white pin is what holds this on top. Everything else is kind of loose. So you basically look at it from above, try to find that white pin, just kind of drop it onto the, the Millennium Falcon, see, if, see where it's about centered there. So now it's about centered. Then you're going to look for that white pin and you are going to find where it lines up and then push down. And then that's the way it connects. So pretty easy to do that, like for a, for a 
20 year old lego set that's actually a pretty impressive feature i i quite like that you're able to open it up see how you do it and then actually do it so the top will not fall off unless you actually pull it off like that's how it's connected so it's actually a pretty sturdy connection overall the design of this set is pretty trash i'm just gonna be blunt like by today's standards this set looks awful and i think most people can agree with that you look at the newer millennium falcons i got a couple over here and you really just it doesn't compare so the design is trash. The price point, expensive. $150 in today's money, I could not see myself paying for this. The minifigure selection, however, Han Solo, we have Luke Skywalker inside, as well as Leia inside, still probably underneath the floorboards, C-3PO, R2-D2, and Chewbacca over here. Excellent minifigure selection. Can't go wrong with those minifigures. All absolutely classic, awesome characters. That being said, the only reason you should buy this set in 2019 is if you really want just a classic Lego Star Wars Millennium Falcon. There's no other reason you should be buying this set. It's not good by today's standards. It doesn't have great play features. You'll have much more fun with any other LEGO Star Wars Millennium Falcon. The interior is pretty lacking. The exterior is partly the wrong color. And of course, it comes in old gray, which nobody li I mean, I wouldn't say nobody likes, but the I don't love the old grays. The newer grays, I like them. They're a lot more vibrant than the old grays that you see. So that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think about this set down in the comments section below. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Solid, solid D minus. A solid D. Like, yeah. passing in some places, I suppose, but not really good enough overall. Leave a like if you enjoyed my review of the original Millennium Falcon from 2000. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here and you want to see more LEGO videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.